now to talk about the capacity of our uh, health and hospitals facilities and all the personnel like these good people here who will be part of uh, fighting off this virus here in this city. I want to turn to CEO of Health and Hospitals, Dr. Mitch Katz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for having us at Bellevue. Bellevue is the longest running public hospital in the United States, uh, established prior to the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Bellevue was a leader in the HIV AIDS epidemic. Bellevue was there to provide care with compassion, without fear, uh, to provide the very best of care. Also, in uh, the Ebola outbreak, uh, this hospital was the only hospital in New York State to successfully take care of somebody with Ebola who fully recovered, and to do that without any other infections occurring uh, to uh, healthcare personnel. This is a hospital that knows how and knows how to do it with compassion, with love, uh, with competence. It's also a public hospital, which means that people who are undocumented, people without insurance, they know that they can come here. They can come to Bellevue. They don't have to worry that they're going to get a bill that they can't pay, that they're going to be treated as unwelcome with all of the negative anti-immigrant spirit coming out of Washington. How great that that's not true in New York City. It's not true at Bellevue. And I'm so grateful to you, Mr. Mayor, to the City Council for always maintaining that. We are prepared at Bellevue. We are prepared at the other 10 acute care hospitals of health and hospitals. We are prepared at our other 60 outpatient sites. Uh, we have known for several weeks that it is likely that we would reach a point where there would be many people uh, seeking our services uh, because of respiratory disease. As the mayor has explained, 80% of people who contract this virus will have little or minimal symptoms, but 20% will need health care services, and probably about 5% of those people will need intensive services, such as uh, a breathing tube uh, and a ventilator machine. We are prepared for that. We have been practicing. Bellevue and all our acute care hospitals have plans. Now, those of you in the the lay press may say, well, wait a minute, we've, we've been hearing that hospitals are crowded, we've been hearing that ICUs are crowded already. How could you possibly be prepared to take on additional people? And the answer is that in an emergency, you change how you operate. You don't continue to operate in the same standard. So we are prepared at Bellevue and all of our hospitals that were we to have many patients with respiratory distress, we would rapidly discharge those patients who are in the hospital now and do not need to be in the hospital because they can be safely cared for at home. We would cancel all elective surgeries. So there is a lot of incredibly valuable work that a hospital like this does. We remove gallbladders. We fix hernias. We uh, fix bones. We do arthroscopy. We do bariatric surgery. All very worthwhile. All that stops in an emergency. Uh, we have outpatient clinics. Health and Hospitals does 1.1 million outpatient visits a year. In an emergency, we will be canceling our outpatient surgeries, we will be canceling our outpatient visits, and we will be directing all our great physicians and nurses and technicians and physician assistants and nurse practitioners and pharmacists to our inpatient areas. We know where in every hospital, if we needed to set up intensive care beds. Someone thoughtfully asked the other day, well, but do you have enough intensive care bed? An intensive care bed is defined by the great nurse who is caring for the patient. It's not a physical space. If you give me a great nurse as I have in Bellevue, I can turn any space into an intensive care space. Uh, what matters is the staffing. What matters is uh, having the appropriate equipment. We have at Health and Hospitals 376 uh, negative pressure rooms. Uh, if we needed to double up 
negative pressure rooms, not something we would ever do in regular practice, where the overwhelming likelihood is you'd have two patients with different diseases. So of course, they would not go in the negative pressure room together. In the case where we suddenly have many people who have tested positive for COVID-19, we would be able to double up existing spaces. We have practiced on our masks. We have practiced on our gowns. We know the different levels of uh, protective equipment that are necessary. We have implemented that in all of our settings. We very much appreciate the efforts on having more testing. Um, that would make a huge difference for us, and we greatly appreciate the efforts that you, Mr. Mayor, and the City Council have made uh, to make that happen so that we know who is sick, who is not sick, and that will allow us to take care of people. We, have, we are 30,000 employees strong. Uh, we will all be taking care of those patients uh, if we have a large number. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. President of the City Council, we are ready. We are prepared. Thank you very, very much. Mitch, uh, energetic report as always. Thank you very, very much.